Good morning, guys. Today we're going to be doing a SSD replacement, an M.2 replacement for a Dell XPS 13 9360 model, as you can see here. If you follow my cursor, this is the model here. Um, you know, uh, my customer actually had a, a drive that wasn't booting into Windows or anything. It was just kind of just locking up at the uh, the screen. Then once I did the the testing for his drive because I kind of took apart the system you know assuming that I wasn't going to do a review for it so when I decided to do because I, I was going to have it for overnight anyway so I'm just doing it early in the morning here which is about seven in the morning you know in, in, in Ottawa Ontario so um, as for this model here it's a pretty simple installation so you know you only need just a pry tool and and you know and, and a T5 uh, screwdriver and that's about it um, so just as for this one here it's very simple um, all you have to do just, just to start off, as you can see here, um, there's four screws at the bottom, two in the middle, and then two on top. And then do remember, there is another one here. You'll need a little star screwdriver for this one here. So if you just put your fingernail and lift up the, uh, the uh, this little compartment here, you'll see a screw that's right in this corner here at the top right-hand corner. So once you remove all of these screws here, you know, uh, the panel isn't that easy to remove because normally when I actually remove these casings, to be honest with you, I'm, normally I just use my my you know my thumbnail just to start them off and then just just run them down in the corners and the top side just to get them off but this one here you do need a pry tool and one thing i noticed is the one thing i always try to make note because a lot of you know uh disassemblies other guys that do they don't really tell you exactly where to start so that it makes your job a lot easier so that you're not breaking anything you know or or any part of your you know your your bottom you know uh you know bezel or anything like that so if you with this one here so the best way to, t to start off the, the using your pry tool is to face your screen down on the table like you did here and then almost bring it up about 80 degrees up. And if you see this open area here, this was where I started mine. So I kind of put my thumb screw, or sorry, my thumbnail right there. Then I was able to start the pry. And then what I do is I once I got a little gap opened up, then I put my pry tool, you know, or you can use a credit card or anything, you know, a pry tool. A lot of people use credit cards. If you have an old card that, you know, that's like a money card or anything, a Walmart card that doesn't, you know, if you want to use it, just use any type of card, you know, pry tool, you know, a little plastic pry tool that will do. Once you have, going back to this here, so once you have a little gap open up, you can just put your credit card and then just run it down to the right hand side and then run it to the left also. Like, as you can see here, it's already been opened up, but it just, it's very, once you have it open, it's very simple. And once you get to the corners, because you got to run it down also from the left and the right side here. The best thing to do is just to run your, you know, your pry tool here in the corner, which this is the corner unit here. Sorry, this is the corner unit here. So this is the corner unit here. So this, the, 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 the top center notch was over here. So once you get to the corner, just run it down to the bottom and do the other side also, which is the left side. You know, once you've done that, um, I noticed with this one here, the best way to get the, uh, the top cover open is to do it like this here. You just once you apply some force, just open it up. You, you'll find that there's actually a little bit of, you know, it, 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 it's kind of tight in these corners. So I noticed it, it opened up more easier on the left side. So I kind of just ran my fingers down there and then I started working in my way up to the top left hand corner. Once I got this corner opened up, I noticed this corner didn't want to open up, you know, so and then so I thought, you know, maybe I'll just try to just hold this section here and then just try to lift it up but i find that it wasn't still releasing but when i tried to grab it from the left and the right hand side here this whole corner i just kind of churned it and then pulled it up from this corner then this whole part here would release easier which is kind of odd because usually once you pull up the from the top end it should just release and i've actually released all of the corners which was really weird you know, um, but you know, that's just the way it is with some cases, you know, sometimes it's not always the easiest way to open it up is from the top front or the front middle. Sometimes you have to turn it sideways and just put your left hand here, your right hand there, and then just lift it up from this side, you know, so you don't have to worry about there's any cables attached to this, you know, this bottom panel here. So you're not going to pull anything apart. You know, it's, it's, it's just the aluminum panel there. So, so don't worry about it. So you just put your left hand, uh, left your, your left hand here, and then your right hand there, hand there, and then just lift it up from this side here and bring it over to the right. And then it should help release this corner here. And that's what I find it with this model here or just with this one here. So yours, you might be able to just lift it up from the top middle for, or the front middle here and then just lift it up. And then it should just pop. You know, not, not every laptop is built the same. So 
you know, and that should be pretty simple. So once we have the, the you know, the, the bottom cover removed, you'll be able to see it here. And, you know, I, I've been doing this for 23 years. And a lot of times, you know, if you want my honesty, I don't always remove the battery. You know, the battery is really, really crucial is that, you know, if you're replacing an LCD screen, that's when it comes really handy that you should always, I, I would say, yeah, pretty well, 100%, just, just remove the battery before you replace your LCD screen. Because when you're unplugging the, uh, the 30 or 40 pin LCD cable and stuff, which I did, you know, one time I did, I got lazy, like about over 12 years ago. Um, I ended up shorting my customer's board, which ended up just literally just killing the board. It's just that simple. So if you're replacing a screen, don't even take the chance. You know, open up the bottom panel, disconnect your battery, and then replace your screen afterwards. Because then you don't have to worry about shorting the, uh, you know, the the cable or, or, or even your board. You know, I thought it was just a cable that was messed up, you know, which I do have, a, you know, a, a screen specialist that disassembles everything. You know, he fixes boards and screens you know uh you know he does uh you know soldering and everything i mean but the whole thing is when it comes to screens don't even take that chance just replace you know your your uh you know sorry just remove your lcd cable and your battery battery first before you replace your screen but when it comes to any other internal part com you know replacement you know if it's just your if you're doing an upgrade or you're you're replacing your wireless adapter that's situated right here on the top right hand corner or you're just popping out your 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 M.2, which is right here, or your CPU fan. You really don't need to you know to unplug the battery. But if you want to, here I, I took I took a picture of where the screws are for you. Anyways, if you do decide you want to do it, if you just want to be very cautious. So there's a screw right there at the top left hand corner. At the bottom left, there's one at the bottom right. These two are not a part of this battery. It's just it's part of the uh, I think the the side speakers here. And then there's a small one right there, as you can see. You know, and I also took a close-up shot on how you can remove the uh, the battery connector. As you can see here, you can just if you put your your thumbnail and your index finger thumbnail on the left, your index on the right, you can actually just wiggle it out. It wasn't actually that difficult to pull it out. Don't use anything metallic tip or anything, please, to remove this. If you can't get your fingernails on it, just use a plastic pry tool or something because the last thing you want to do is to slip and then your metallic tip ends up hitting something here shorts the board while you're trying to remove the battery and you know or or slips and breaks or or, or pops another chip out or something you know you, that's the last thing you want to do so just use your fingernail or a, a, a plastic pry tool just to wiggle out the left and the right side here and it'll just come out pretty easily you know and and that's about it and i also did a i took a picture of the model that if you do need another 256 of the same brand you want to replace it with an original oem part this is the information for the original OEM part that's a part of the original SSD that actually died which is uh, made by Hynix you know which Dell's been using that brand for the longest time even their RAM is, is Hynix also and a lot of other companies use Hynix too because it's pretty cheap um, but I would probably suggest if you want to get yourself a really good one get a Samsung Evo series you know the the 97980 e, you know Evo SSD series which is probably about 80 bucks Canadian give or take uh, my customer didn't want to spend a lot of money, so he end up, you know, I just end up getting a crucial, a 500 gig crucial, uh, you know, uh, SSD for him, and it was, uh, I think it was $56, including tax Canadian, you know, so I mean, I hope this helps you guys out, it's a pretty simple install, and, you know, remember for this, for this one here, um, to reinstall the windows, I just want to make a quick note, um, the F12 key is your boot option key. And the thing is that with this laptop, I noticed that the F12 key wasn't enabled in the BIOS. So remember, you have to go into the BIOS, which I'm pretty sure it was by pressing escape. And then we, when you press escape, it gives you the option, the whole list of where you can go to, go into the BIOS or other areas. So once you enable the F12, this will allow you to be able to boot off of your Windows 10 or Windows 11, you know, bootable drive, uh, flash drive. You know, so remember, you got to do that first because if you actually plug it, you know, plug in your SSD, and then you already have your Windows 10 or 11, you know, uh, bootable, uh, you know, flash drive ready to do the Windows install. You know, uh, if you don't press, if if you don't enable the F12 function key in the BIOS, so that it's, uh, you know, so that you can actually press F12 so that the menu can pop up. You know, it 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 won't pop up. You know, so you do go into the BIOS first to make sure that it's enabled because if you are pressing F12 and your boot option 
is which is one of the options that Dell gives you to boot off of your one of your if you're off your flash drive it's not showing up it's because your f12 is not is not enabled so remember go into the bias by pressing escape one of the options will give you the uh, will give you an option to go to the bias and just look for the uh, the uh, the f12 function key which it's by default is usually disabled and then just go enable that save your changes exit the bias and then press the f12 key or hold it down until the uh, your system will boot off of the uh, your uh, your flash drive and if you really want to make sure that just to have it boot off you can also go into the boot option menu and just move it up by pressing the up and down arrow key or the f6 key i think it was just to move it up and you can make the uh, the the flash drive is a you know the first boot device for it to boot off and then save the changes too you know i hope that helps you guys you know thanks for watching if you have any questions or anything anyways just just you know write it down in the comments and uh, you know thanks for watching have a good day guys